But um, and then, so that's a linear system. A time invariant system is just something that doesn't change with time, right? That y is equal to mx plus c, the values of m and c don't change with time. So the output-input relationship remains the same with time. So that's a linear time invariant system. And convolution is a hallmark of those systems. Why? The output of a linear time invariant system is just the convolution of the input and the impulse response of the system. And the impulse response, I'll be defining that later. Um, but the impulse response, you can think of it as a property of the system, something that it always does, right? The y is equal to mx plus c, so m and c are the properties of that line, right? And so that's related to the impulse response of the system. But the reason I, I wrote this line earlier here is to suggest that's why convolutions are so important, because you can predict the output of a system if you know this operation and you know the, imp uh, you know the input function that you're giving to the system and you know sort of the properties of the system. Convolution is the operation that you use to get to the output. That's why it's an important operation, okay? I'm gonna talk just briefly about the math. I don't know, you, did you guys cover this in differential equations a little bit? I guess when you were doing Laplace transforms, this may have come up a little bit. But anyway, so convolution is defined by this integral. So if you're talking about the convolution of two functions, f and g, that's just this integral, and I'm just writing this here. We'll be getting an intuition of all this math very soon. Um, and so it's an integral from minus infinity to infinity. One of the functions you just take as is, the other one you flip along the y-axis and then you shift it, and I'll be showing examples of this. And then in biomedical systems, usually our domain is zero to infinity, which means that f and g are zero everywhere else. So you can shift this, bump up this lower limit to zero, and t minus, because of the t minus infinity term, the upper limit goes to t. All this is theory. Um, you, I think, yeah, question. So, let me get to the example instead of the matter thing. That's the one that makes it very, very clear as to what a convolution is. Come to the theory later. Okay, so, so now let's talk about a system where you're giving multiple boluses of drug to a person, right? This is an example. So you're giving a bolus of a drug, say five times I, in this case, I give a bolus of a drug. And what happens to any bolus of a drug? There's an exponential decay. In this case, I assume my time constant's one. So the exponential decays e to the bar minus t. So that's the decay that happens in blood, right? Irrespective of how much of a bolus you give, right? And now the question I ask is, I'm giving the bolus at a certain frequency. So what is the plasma concentration at any point of that drug? That's the question I'm asking. That's the output, right? The input is just my regimen, my schedule at which I give boluses. There's not just one bolus, there are multiple boluses involved here, right? The system impulse response is related to this exponential decay. Every time I give a bolus, I see this exponential decay. But the output, you can imagine, would be some sort of sum of all these exponential decays from a lot of boluses, and that's the convolution. So let's, let's see that in animation form here. So, so now, what you're seeing here is, so on the top, right, is my, are my boluses, okay? These are the boluses I've given. This red line is supposed to mark the exponential decay happening, right? And what the convolution is doing is, I flip this, that, that was the t minus tau sign, I flip my impulse response, and I slide it along my bolus regimen, and every time I'm sliding it, I'm generating my output. And so you can imagine, so here, you have contributions from this bolus as well as that bolus, right? And the, you can imagine this reverse operation is important because when you're at this time point, the contribution of this bolus to that time point is approximately this, this on the red line, right? So that's why the sliding becomes important because this bolus contributes the maximum of the exponential, right? Because you're looking at that time point and that this bolus would be contributing about this much. So that's why you slide, that's why you flip the impulse response and then you slide it across. By the way, it's the same operation, even you can flip the input and slide it across the impulse response. That doesn't matter. And that happens because of a change of variables, which I'll show. But it doesn't matter, it's symmetric, the convolution. Um, but does this make sense to everybody? And that, that's the fundamental of the convolution operation. You, you flip one, let's look back at the math quickly and I'll replay this animation. So again, this t minus tau, so f in that case was my bolus regimen was my impulse response. I flipped it, and then I'm just sliding it, which means multiple values of f and g, multiple values of them, go into making one value of h. Because this one value of h, one value of h c comes as an integral. 
they're having multiple time points, which makes sense, right? In the case of your plasma concentration of a drug, all the boluses that have gone previously, right, the system has memory, all the boluses that have gone previously contribute to the plasma concentration that you see at some time point in the system, right? Because all of them, because those boluses might be still lasting to some degree, and that degree is defined by the exponential decay curve, right? Does this make sense to everybody? And I'll show you, convolutions come up everywhere. Then once you start thinking like this, everything that you've seen about differential equation, everything just becomes a convolution. So I was mentioning that instead of sliding the impulse response or the system property, that exponential is the system property here, across the input, we could also flip the input and slide that across the impulse response. And that, and that will be written in math just like this, right? You're just changing everything. And you can just verify this for yourself. You just do a simple variable substitution and these two integrals become equal. So it, convolution is a commutative property. Now Everett, does that answer your question? Are you, you're combining two of your functions. It's a linear combination. So in, in the discrete world, you'll write something like this. It's just literally, so I flipped my impulse. I placed it along with my input. Right? And at each value that I'm evaluating, I'm just taking the sum of the products of the function values at each time point, and that's called a convolution. No, 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 no. F is my, in that example, F is my bolus regimen, my entire bolus schedule. So the entire blue function is F. And G is my impulse response. So G is, so yes, so what is the impulse response? Okay, so let me define at this point. It's the characteristic decay. So if I was to give the system a unit impulse, that it, the output of the system is the impulse response by definition. Unit impulse is just um, a bolus of one unit in this case. It's just an input with one as the magnitude in a discrete case. In the case, in the, in the case where you're, in this case, we're doing it as a dic discrete problem. In the case where you're working with continuous functions, that impulse becomes the Dirac delta function. I don't know if you talked about this. It's the function that whose integral is one when you integrate from minus infinity to infinity, but its value is zero everywhere else apart from zero. You can look it up. It's called the Dirac delta function, and so that's the impulse. Um, so, so, but again, what I want you to understand intuitively is that the impulse response of a system is sort of the property of the system, the defining hallmark feature of the system, right? How is it going to behave when I'm giving it a unit impulse? How is it going to behave? That's the idea behind the impulse response. And I'm gonna talk about an interesting property of impulses in general after this, but I'm gonna replay the animation so that you can convince yourself that this is how convolutions work. So again, look very carefully at how summations are happening here. Yeah. There are five different boluses, and the output in this case is my plasma concentration of the drug, for example, right? And the exponential de describes what would happen to the drug in plasma if I just give a unit bolus, if I give one unit of bolus. That's the idea of the exponential. So you see how here, at this time point, both of these will be contributing to some degree. Here again, both of these would be contributing. One way to convince yourself is that the, so that, that input bolus was 10, but the thing is that the out, this output goes slightly above 10. So you'll see even more variations. I can increase the frequency of this slightly, so I can just do. So now I've increased the frequency of those boluses so that you can see the summation perhaps a little bit even better. So you start off with some bolus, and now you'll see even more contributions happening. So that was an input of 10, and you see how here the bolus was an input of 10, but the plasma concentration spikes a lot more above 10 because you have residual contributions of this bolus and so on. And that's just the convolution. Yeah. Yeah. 
at the time, right? And so that's exactly what the math is too, right? So, but you're still speaking of a discrete case. So in the discrete case, ultimately you are doing a computation in your head, right? Um, the problem becomes that when you have to do a continuous case, you can only solve so many integrals. That's why it becomes useful to do stuff computationally because you can only solve so many integrals. So the yellow window in that case, I think, so I mean, the whole point is that, again, the yellow window you can think of in this specific case is sort of the time interval over which the different values of f and g of my input on my impulse response are contributing to my convolution, one value of the convolution. So that's what I was saying, that multiple values of f and g are contributed because, remember it's an integral, or in the discrete version, it's a sum of products. You're summing many, many different products within this interval. That's the whole, that's very important to understand that multiple values of your input and of your impulse response go into making one value of the output. Right? Yeah. So the G function is just here. I plotted that here too. But then for the convolution, as I mentioned, you have to flip it along the y-axis and then you slide it across. So that's what was being slid across here. Yes, that's the red line. That's G. Sure. But, yeah, that's, I can replay it very quickly, uh, and then we should maybe go on to another example where you'll again see this. That, it's just being slid across. At each value, when it, whenever you have this yellow window, everything in that yellow window, there you're taking sums of products, and then you can plotting accordingly. That's the convolution of It's actually in this case pretty much, in this case it's pretty much the entire sort of, G is defined on the interval zero to five here. Yeah. So in this case it's just zero to five because it's, by definition it's zero everywhere else. Yes, yes. So you could write it, I think, so, I should mention that this code, a lot of this animation code is just downloaded from the MATLAB file exchange. And that's something that you guys should also do whenever you are like, you know, there's no point writing things that are already written. Um, the MATLAB central file exchange, it's like a portal where people post useful things and you can download them and use them. And so I modified it based on the examples that I'm gonna talk about today, but Anyways, in this case, it's using the MATLAB conv operator, which um, we'll talk about a lot. We'll ultimately, we'll be doing image processing in the Fourier domain, in the Fourier transforms, and that's what I'm building up to. That's the last lecture of the So we'll slowly get there, but. Okay, so, but this is using the conv function to do that. Okay. Right, so we did that. Okay, so again, the, I'm just presenting the discrete version. It's just, again, you can see it's a sum of products, right? And so now I wanna bring in the interesting case where we're not looking at bolus in fusion, uh, a bolus um, regimen, but rather what if I decide to give the infusion of a drug, right? So what if, I, what if I set up my machine such that it's delivering drug at a constant rate? What do people expect will happen? My, my impulse response of the system is the same. So my impulse response is still that exponential. The only thing that's changed is that blue function is now a straight line, horizontal line. Yes, exactly. So if that's not a surprise, that's great. But I think pretty cool to just see this. So the blue again here, that's the infusion. So look at your output. The output just becomes an exponential. And so, um, I think this is pretty cool. But, uh, so, 
So, and that sort of makes sense if you just think about the convolution here, right? So after a certain time, you still have a constant <laughs> input, and so you're gonna be doing the same sum of products every single time, right? It's the same input, it's the same impulse response. It makes sense that you're gonna hit a steady state here. But this does suggest something very interesting because we usually get to such outputs using differential equations, right? We'll set up an ODE45 thing, and in the case of an infusion of a drug, that's what we would have done. That's sort of the lecture two example we were looking at, where, you're, where I would have said, I have a constant input, and then input minus the elimination term, where the elimination term is a first order rate constant defined term. And that's how I would have used ODE45 to solve that differential equation, and I would have received this result. In fact, the point is that for, and I'm not gonna go into the math of this, but for a linear system of differential equations, the general solution of any linear system, however many equations you have, is just a convolution. You can write it in terms of a convolution. So a linear system of differential equations, the solution is just a convolution. You can just write it and make it. That's the power of convolution. So just wanted to talk about the infusion of a drug and tie it into differential equations because convolutions 